a joy to be here this morning. Amen. 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 I'm sitting in the back listening to those beautiful songs, song of praise unto the Lord. Yeah. I'll tell you what, it's, uh, it's uh, exciting. Exciting to serve Jesus. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. It's a yeah. pleasure to serve the Lord. Yeah. It's a joy to be here this morning. You know, the yeah. psalmist said, uh, 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 in Psalm 42, he says, I was glad. So glad. They said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Are you glad to be here this morning? Yeah. Well, I'm glad you're here. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. Yeah. Pastor, once again, thank you for allowing us the opportunity to come to share God's word this morning. Amen. Pastor Lovelace, thank you for keeping us informed of when we're to go. Amen. And I want to thank all of you for being here. Amen. I want to thank my beautiful wife for being here. Amen. 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 If you have your Bibles this morning, as the pastor was saying about the track, uh, it would be wise for all of us to learn not to play on the track. <laughs> you never know when a train is coming. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I want you to turn your Bibles to 2 Timothy chapter 3. Yeah. That's a... 2 Timothy chapter 3. I want you to read the first five verses with me silently as I read it aloud. You know, when it comes to the Word of God, one of the things that the devil always majors in is distracting you and I from hearing what God has to say to us. That's why over and over again, even in the book of Revelation, chapter 2, verse 6, 7, chapter 3, verse 7, in the parables that Jesus gave, he spoke this word. He said, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit has to say to the churches. Lord. One thing the devil wants to do with all of us is to plug up our ears yeah. and blind our eyes yeah. to the truth of God. Yes, yes, sir. Now here in these, 2 Timothy chapter 3, starting at verse 1, this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, yes, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, mm -hmm. disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, mm -hmm. without natural affection, mm -hmm. truth breakers, mm -hmm. false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, yeah, traded, headed, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Yes, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away Amen. you may be seated Amen. I want to talk with you this morning on this topic from these passages how to deal with these tragic turbulent troubling times we are living in tragic times. Yeah. Yes, we are living in turbulent times. Yes. We are living in troubling times. Yes. And everything that's not nailed down is being torn apart. Yes, sir. And the things that are nailed down, the devil is attacking them and he's pulling nails as fast as he can. Yes. Psalms chapter 11 and verse 3 says, if the foundation of the righteous be destroyed, what shall the righteous do? Amen. Amen. Now I want to invite you this morning to pay close attention to the word of God and to not allow anything to distract you from it. You see, so often the devil runs his interference game when God seeks to speak to our hearts and our minds. Yeah. And when you begin to study your Bible at night, I know for me, and you get into what you're reading, and pretty soon, that's the time you get most sleepy. Because he know that if you are asleep, you can't be aware of what God is saying to you. That's why Ephesians 5.14, Paul was talking to the Ephesians, and he says, Awake thou that sleepest, arise from the dead, and Christ 
shall give you life. Amen. You see, uh, that's what he wants. He wants the whole kingdom to sleep. Very much like the story we read that, about sleeping beauty. Now, I know that would be impossible for some of us. We're sleeping, but we're sleeping ugly. Now, I want to tell you, Proverbs 14, 34 says, Righteousness exalt a nation. Yeah. But sin is a reproach to any people. Yes, yes sir. Yeah. You see, you can write it in box kind letters across the problems of this world, my friends. The problem is because of sin. Yes. Look at the conditions that we face in the world. Yes. One of the conditions that face all of us, unless you are extremely rich, is economic slavery. Yes, yes, indeed. You know, uh, slavery didn't end in 1864 when the Emancipation Proclamation was passed. You see, because Proverbs 22 7 says, The rich ruleth over the poor, and the borrower is a servant to the lender. Do you owe anybody any money? Then you are a servant. You are a recipient of economic slavery. Now, I want to tell you something. That, uh, this is not something new. It's always been the devil's motive to enslave the souls of men. Amen. Yeah, you see, the devil uh, treats man's soul as if it's disposable. Yeah. He wants to use it up and then destroy it. Yeah. And if you sell out to him, he will use you up yes, and then destroy you. Yeah. You see, Jesus said in John 10, 10, he said, the thief coming not but for the steal, kill, and to destroy. He said, but I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Yeah. Now you think about the pattern there that the thief does. He comes first of all to steal. Right. Yeah. Well, if he steals something from you, that means that you're living. Yeah. So he wants to steal and rob from you and I what God, the blessings of God, is seeking to give us. Yeah. Proverbs chapter 10 verse 22 says, the blessing of the Lord maketh rich. Yeah. And he added no sorrow with it. Yeah. You see, God, you know, we sing the song, oh, God has a blessing with my yeah. Yeah, you see, the, the, the Bible tells us in Ephesians 1 3 that God has already blessed all of us yeah. with all spiritual blessings yeah. in heavenly places yeah. in Christ. Yeah. So the devil wants to steal those. Yeah. Blessings yes. that Amen. God has for you and I from us. Yes. But now, you have to be alive for something to be stolen. If you're dead, anybody can come to your house and get what they want. Amen. But what does he do? The thief coming out before the steal. Right. Then he comes to kill. That's your physical personality. Yes. And your physical physical. He wants to kill you. Yes. And I want to warn all of us that we need to. As a, you're driving to Florida, there's some signs on the highway, and it says, stay alert and stay alive. Yes, sir. We need to stay alert in the spiritual battle, in the spiritual warfare, in the spiritual life, man, yes, so that we can stay alive. Yes, uh, and, and even practically, friends, yes. stay alert when you're driving down the highway. Uh, too many of us uh, have allowed the new age to take us over. Yeah. We can't set our cell phones down for 30 seconds. Yeah. Yeah. Even if we're riding down the road, somebody's texting us and, yeah. and we have the urge to reach over yeah. and get that phone and, uh, while we're driving and looking at the text. Yeah. Yeah. And, and there have been a lot of fatalities yeah. because of that distracted yeah. driving. Yeah. I'm telling you, the devil is seeking your physical life. He's seeking mine. The wife and I and my children experienced the death of one of our sons this week. Wednesday, this past Wednesday. And DeMar was adopted into our family when he was in elementary and high school. And he was a wonderful, terrific son. But he was driving, taking his son to his father and mother's house at 4 o'clock in the morning. And some guy high on this synthetic marijuana hit him and killed him. What a noble father tomorrow was because his son was in the back seat and, and when they found him, he was dead, but he was reaching back holding on to the, the seat where his nine-month-old son lay. The son did not die. 
but he's in the, in the, he's in the intensive care at Children's Hospital. I'm going to ask you to pray for him Amen. and pray for the family. I'm telling you that the devil is seeking our physical lives. And, and I'm saying that you and I, according to what the scripture says, we need to stay alert and stay alive. It's just some places we need to make right decisions and, and not put ourselves in a position for him to do something to us. Last month I had another tragic experience of my niece went to a party in Springfield, Missouri. Beautiful. She was just socializing and having a good time. You want to come on help me, baby. But she was there just socializing and some guy in the house went crazy. He pulled out his gun and he started shooting. He shot seven people. And she was one of them. And, and of course they shot him, so they don't know who shot him. But he shot her in the leg and hit a major artery. And she bled out before the ambulance could pick her up. They took her to the hospital and they revived her. And she lasted a little while, about a month or so. But eventually it took a toll on her. Uh, I, I'm saying, Seek God's will about where you ought to be. Amen. You see, God has a geographical will for us. And if you get out of the geographical will of God, he wants you to be in Scott. And you in New York somewhere. Come on, talk. You put yourself in a position for the devil to do whatever he wants to do. You see, I'm, I'm saying to you that the thief come at night but for the steal. He comes to kill, but then he comes to destroy. Yeah. Now, what is that destruction and that about? It's about eternal destruction. He not only wants to derive and steal from us all the blessings that God has for us, he wants then to pursue our physical lives in death, and then he wants us to spend eternity in hell through eternal destruction because he knows as Romans 6 23 says the wages of sin is death yes indeed we look at the conditions of our day he said this know ye that in the last days perilous times shall come yeah these tragic turbulent and troubling times that we're in was well, already prophesied that they're coming but friend don't get the idea that it's something new no, 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 no. Because Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and verse 9 says, there's nothing new under the sun. That which is done is something that shall be done. And that which has already been done is, is something that's going to be repeated. There's nothing new under the sun. As a matter of fact, if you want to look at our day and age and compare to some of the times past, remember what Jesus said in Matthew 24, 37. He says, as the days of Noah were, uh, yes. so also shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Yes. He said, they were eating and drinking, yes. marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. Yes. The three stunning signs of Noah's day are the same three stunning signs of our day. Yes, what were the three stunning signs of Noah's day? The three stunning signs of Noah's day, number one, was ignorance. Yes, sir. He said, and they knew not until the day he entered the ark. Yes, sir. Knew not his ignorance. Uh -huh. Not only ignorance, he said they were marrying and giving in marriage. Uh -huh. That's indifference. Yes. The regular routine of life was going on. Yes, sir. Not only ignorance and indifference, but then marrying and giving in marriage means that they were white swapping like they do in California now. Yes, sir. In Hollywood. Yes. The immorality. Yes, sir. The three stunning signs of North Day was yes. ignorance, indifference, and immorality. Yes, sir. The three stunning signs of our day, yes. ignorance. Yes. We have nuclear giants yes, yes. and spiritual peace. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can bring up almost any topic, and everybody knows a little bit about uh, something about every topic, but when you bring up something spiritual, yes. Yes. We bring up the truth about God's word. Yes, sir. Bring up the truth about God. Then we all become so ignorant. Uh, yeah. And, and even they will tell you in the political arena 
It's two things we don't discuss in our social arena. Yeah. Religion and politics. Right. Yes, indeed. Uh -huh. we, we're living in a messed up world. Yeah. And, and, and that's why the Lord Jesus has told us in Matthew 5, 16, he said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify God. If we don't be the light of Jesus, how is God going to be glorified in these tragic, turbulent, and troubling times that we live in? You, you see, we got too much game in us. We, 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 we want to play with God, but the old folks used to tell us, I'm not your play pudding. And I'm going to tell you that God is not our play pudding. He's serious about what he's called us to do. He's serious about his word being lived out in our lives. He's serious about his light shining through us that he might be glorified. Yes, indeed. Yes, he's serious about it. And I hate for us to find out the hard way. Yeah. How serious he is. Yeah. Look at the conditions of our time. Man. Political elocution. Yeah. Promises made by politicians uh -huh. without performance. Yes, sir. They promise you the world uh -huh. and produce nothing. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the old trick the guys used to play in the neighborhood, ladies. <laughs> they promise a girl the world, but when they get what they want, uh -huh. they didn't want what they got. Uh -huh. <laughs> And they did not deliver on their promises. Amen. Amen. Yes, indeed, political elocution. But we live in an age of gender revolution. Yeah. There's an identity crisis in America. Yeah. We used to have she's and him's, and now we got stems. They can't tell whether they're she's or him. God made Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. Yes, indeed. I, I just can't get with it. No, these young guys come up telling each other how good they look. Man, you show you know, you show you know, look good. Now I want to be ugly to you, and to every man here, I want to be ugly. Amen. And if I ain't ugly enough, I can show you some more ugliness with these thunderbolts. Well, that ain't no threat to nobody, but I'm just saying. Uh, you ugly to me? I want you to know that. Every last one of you males. And I hope I'm ugly to you. Man, they want to make it prevalent on TV. We shouldn't get no pleasure out of seeing two women walk up and kiss each other like a man and woman. We're in the age of gender revolution. I'm going to tell you, God destroyed Simon and Gamar because of this. And I want to tell you, what if he got good to America, he's going to have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. We're living in some turbulent times. We're living in some troubling times. Are you troubled about the times we're living in? These are tragic times. Not only political elocution and gender revolution, we live in an age where we have the wrong economic solutions. Yes, sir. Everybody want to live a millionaire life uh -huh. with a penny worth of effort. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, a penny worth of effort in a millionaire life. It just doesn't happen, friends. You see, so when you got the wrong economic solutions, well, what do you do? To enjoy the benefits of satisfaction, you, uh, they rob and cheat and steal and deceive for money, but they don't work. Uh, yes. Proverbs 23 4 says, He that gathered by labor shall increase. Yes. Now, let me give us a lesson on how we can all become rich here this morning. You know, God wants you, you and I to be rich. Yeah. He wants us to prosper. Yeah. Third John 2 said, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as your soul prosper. Yes. Now he doesn't want you to worship prosperity. Amen. No, no. Because you see, he first wants you, Matthew 6 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. He, he doesn't want you to, uh, there's nothing wrong with money, he just doesn't want you to fall in love with money. See, 1 Timothy 6 10 says, the love of money, not money, the love of money is the root of all evil, which why some covenant after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many hurtful sorrows. Yes, sir. Yes. He wants you to be in love with him. Yeah. 
But but here's here, here's something for our riches. Yeah. If we would all apply this, our bank accounts would be bigger next month. Amen. In 30 days, it'll be bigger. Yeah. Give your first 10% to God. Yeah. Uh -huh. Proverbs chapter 3 says, Honor the Lord with the first fruit of your increase. Yeah. Man, if you don't give God a dime out of dollar, you don't love him too much. Yeah. Then, after you give him the first dime, yeah. the first 10%, yeah. take the second 10%. Because of all that uh, that you earn, a part of it is yours to keep. Yeah. Put that 10% aside. Right. Right. Not to be spent, but to build your wealth. Yes. Yeah. And if you put 10%, give God 10%, mm -hmm. and put 10% of everything that you make aside, uh -huh. in 10 years, how much money will you have? Mm -hmm. yeah. Help it out, Pastor. Hey. Get hey. hey. In 10 years, you have a hundred percent of what you make in a whole year. Yeah. So if you're making fifty thousand dollars a year and you put ten percent of it aside every time you get paid, fifty-two times a week, fifty-two times a year for ten years, then you'll have a whole year's salary saved. Yeah. Now, with that year's salary saved, you create yourself a golden slave. How do you do that? You let that put that money in the interest, a compound interest bearing account. You let that compound interest create more golden slaves. You're, you're prospering off the grandchildren of your money. And then you're able to set some money aside for your grandchildren. You see Proverbs 13, 22 says, a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. Yeah. We gotta, we, see, the problem with our aim is that it's, it focuses this no year in the last days, first one, perilous times shall come, men shall be lovers of themselves. You see, we live in an age of selfishness and self centeredness yeah. where everybody said, I'm concerned about me and my boy no more. To hell with G.I. Joe. But, but you see, to, to be a child of God means that we are concerned about each other. To be a child of God, Galatians 5 13 says we are to, to serve one another Amen. in love. Amen. You see, if we're doing it in love, we're going to do it in sincerity. You see, I don't do what I do because of you, and you don't do what you do because of me. I do what I do, and you do what you do because of him. You, you, you see, when I'm doing it unto the Lord, I don't get mad at you if you don't respond the way I want you to if I'm giving you something. You see, I'm not trying to buy you or enslave you. That's what the devil does. If you take the devil's corn and eat it, and he don't get a chance to choke you on the cop, he gets mad at you. <laughs> Let me move on quick. Look at the conditions of our age. Political elocution, gender revolution, identity crisis in America, wrong economic solutions, rob, cheat, and steal, and deceive for money instead of work. And then we live in an age of social devastation. Yes. Yes, sir. You see, that's what he means. He said, men will be lovers of themselves. Yes. Uh -huh. They will be covetous. That means filled with desires, illegitimate desires. Uh -huh. Get mad at you because they want your wife. Yes, sir. And wonder how you end up with a, a woman that's good looking. Yes. An ugly cat like you with a pretty woman like that. Well, you know, most of us guys, we shot above our heads. I remember when I first met my wife. Yes, indeed, she. And I loved her already unconditionally. Yeah. And when I began to communicate with her, I started to fall in love with her. Uh, but she, now, but she caught my attention. If she had been three hundred pounds, three strings of hair in her head, and one tooth in her mouth, I'd say, "Hello, lady," and kept on rubbing. <laughs> She was good to look at and she's still good to look at. Yeah, baby, you're good to look at. Yes, indeed. When she smiled, it, it, it would light up the room. Now, I know she's gained a few little more pounds, but she's just pinching the plot now than what she had. But she had a good baby making body, but I looked at her. And I said, Lord Jesus. Sometimes I had to run away from a pastor so something in me wouldn't rise up. <laughs> now, I'm just telling you how it is, man. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, true. We live in 
live in an age of social devastation. Because men and women in the world want to allow Satan to use them to reverse the order that God has set. Yes, yeah, yeah. You own it now. Now I want to say, let me move on. The fourth thing I want to tell you on how to deal with these tragic, turbulent times. First of all, I want to say to you, secure your salvation. Yes, Amen. What do I mean by secure your salvation? You can't secure it. No. No, no. Because Ephesians 2 8 says, For by grace are you saved yeah. through faith, yeah. not of yourselves, yeah. not of works, yeah. lest any man should boast. Yeah. You don't have anything to boast about your salvation. No. Because as the old gospel song said, Jesus paid it all. Yeah. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, yes. but he washed it whiter than snow. Yes. But what do I mean when I say secure your salvation? Yes. Make sure of your salvation. Yes. That's what I mean. Yes. You see, because Mark 8 36 says, What does it profit a man to gain the whole world yes. and to lose yes. his own soul? Yes. Verse 37 says, What will a man give in exchange yes. for his soul? There's no Anything, nothing that's worth the price of your soul. Secure your salvation. If we're going to know how to deal with these tragic, turbulent times, that's the most important thing because you and I, none of us, never know when we're going to go. This could be the last sermon that some of us hear today. This could be the last sermon that I preach. But the question is, when I leave here, where am I going? Amen. Where will you be when you get where you're going? Yes, Secure your salvation. Make sure of your salvation. You see, look at verse 5. You see, because he says that in First Timothy 3, 5, you can have a form of godliness, but deny the power there from such kind of way. You see, that's what Jesus said in Matthew 7, 21. He said, Not everyone to say, Lord, Lord. Yes. Yes. Shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. That's right. But he that do the will of my Father which is in heaven. That's right. He said, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Those are preachers. Yes. Yes. He said, In your name, cast out demons. Those are exorcists. Yes. He said, In your name, have we not did many wonderful work? Those are church members and choir singers. Yes, sir. You, you can, the, the, one of the greatest tragedies that any of us can experience is to see someone all their life come to church morning, Sunday morning, evening and night. Yes, give their cards, work in the church and then die and go to heaven. Yeah. What a tragedy. Yes, sir. Make sure of your salvation. Yeah. God don't play no games, friends. Yeah. Uh, you're here you playing games with God. I invite you to go somewhere else and play your games. You'll be better off. Yes, indeed. Secure your salvation. Amen. Jesus said in Luke 6, 46, Why call me Lord, Lord? And do not the things which I say. Amen. That's not to say that we won't sin. Being a Christian doesn't mean that you're sinless. Amen. But it means that you ought to sin less and less every day. Amen. You ought to be growing to, to be what God wants you and I to be. I ought to be growing to be what he's called us to be. Because I can't work my way to heaven. If I can work my way to heaven, what is work? Work is pain. If I can pay my way to heaven, then Jesus didn't have to come and die. But he came and died for you and I because God loved us and, and he knew that none of us could pay our way to heaven. He paid the, the, the sin debt that we owe. I was sinking deep in sin far from the peaceful shore, sinking deep to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry from the waters lifted me. Now faith am I. Make sure of your salvation, friends. The poet said, I cannot work my soul to save. Me. That work my Lord has done. But I'll work like any slave yes, yes. for the love of God's yes, right. Friend, we don't work to be saved. No, no. We work because we are saved. Yes, yes. If you're going to deal with these tragic, turbulent times, make sure of salvation. Number two, 
All right. Second thing I want to say to you. Shine your temptations. Yeah. First Corinthians 10, 13 says, there's no temptation but search is coming unto man. Uh -huh. God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted above that you're able, but will with the temptation deliver you and make a way for you to escape it. Yes, sir. Friends, all of us are not tempted by the same thing. Say that now. Say that. But whatever you like, the devil is going to make sure he put it on the hook in front of you. Yeah, yeah. You see, we got to we got to come to the point where we shun our temptations, shun your temptations, shun my temptations. Why? Jesus taught us to pray. He said, in the lot of prayer, he said, "Deliver us from what? Deliver us from temptations. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory is thine, and thine forever." I don't know what your temptation is. I can guess it probably be 90% right on a lot of occasions. On some occasions? Yeah, on a lot of occasions. But I don't know what your temptation but I know what mine are. Yeah. All right, then. And, and I'm saying to you that to shun your temptations and to me to shun my temptations, if we're going to deal with these tragic times, well, we need to remember the song, yield not to temptation, for yielding is sin. All right. We ought to be looking ever to Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Now, let me say this to you, friends. Ladies, I want you all to listen to me real closely. Okay, yeah. It, it seems that maybe what we're saying is something new. It's, it's nothing new. Amen. But I, I'm going to talk to the ladies for a minute. I'm going to tell you how to get everything you want. From your man. Maybe I should have made that my servant. I'm going to tell you everything, anything you want. And sweetheart, I'm going to advise you to listen to because you get a whole lot more with me. Yes, indeed. How to get everything you want from your man. Yes, sir. Listen to what Psalms of Solomon said. What is it? In Psalms of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 6. He just set a seal upon thine heart. And a seal, and a seal upon thine heart. Like you put a tattoo on Tattoo it on your mind, on your heart. Yeah. Yeah, baby. Now, now get this, lady. For love is the strongest death. That's right. If you fall in love with your man, and he know you in love with him, and he ain't got no questions about whether you love him or not, he'll die for you. Because yeah. love is strong as death. Now look at what that scripture there to do. It said, jealousy is as cruel as the grave. Yeah. The coals thereof are coals of fire, which has the most vehement flame. A jealous man, a scared man, they said, can't steal, and a jealous man can't work. <laughs> Sam Fosel was selling, Pastor. Sam Fosel was selling the other day. Twenty-five pounds of self-rising flour for two dollars and nine cents. Yeah. Two dollars and nine cents. I bought two bags of it. Yeah. I can sprinkle it around the door of my house when I leave. And I bought two bags. <laughs> as cruel as a grave. Now really, I'm messing with Pastor and I'm messing with Seth because I'm not jealous. Okay. If my wife don't want me, she's going to be the one messing out. <laughs> and if I told her, uh, people ask me all the time, how's your wife? And I said, they're doing great because they got me. <laughs> and if they don't think so, they're going to let the door hit them with a good Lord split them. <laughs> and I mean that with all my fights. And my wife knows it. Right. But I know she loves me. 
morning. And she doesn't love me like a man love oranges, or like a monkey love bananas, or like a lion love a willoughby. <laughs> Listen to this lady, how to get everything you want out of your man. Love is strong as death. Verse 7, Psalm of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 7. Many waters cannot quench love. Neither can the flood drown. If a man would give all the substance of his house for love, did you get that, ladies? Yeah. He'll give you everything you got. Yeah. Everything come in. All the senses of the house for love. It would be utterly condemned. He'll give it all to you thinking it's nothing. Yeah. If you know you love it. Yeah, do it. But you, it's a problem in America and it's a problem in marriage, Pastor. Yeah. 90% of the women, you ask them, do you love your husband? And they tell you emphatically, yes. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. But you go to the next question. It's the most uh, relevant question. You ask them, are you in love with your husband? Oh, yeah. Now we got a problem. Yeah. Because 90% of them say no. Oh, not in love. I love him, uh, but I ain't in love with him. Uh, well, why did you marry him? Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. I was in love with him then. <laughs> Now, men marry for different reasons. Why do they marry? Men marry because they think they love you. Or they are sexually infatuated with you. Amen. Uh, yeah, you see, you, you want a man to marry you because he loves you, not because he's infatuated with you sexually, because that sexual infatuation will wear off. Because it's a new crop coming out every year. Make sure the man loves you for who you are. Yes. And I want to tell you something. Y'all need to stop that stuff you do. Yes. He go to kiss you and you turn your face away. Oh. And then you make the excuse, I got a bad taste in my mouth. <laughs> uh, he go to kiss you and you turn your face away and say, oh, you, you got bad breath. I'm going to tell you. Brush your teeth first, baby, before you start come trying to kiss on me. Look at him fall in love with the man. You don't care if his money is dirty. You will spend it. Go on and kiss his bad man like you really enjoy it. Hold your breath and say a prayer. Lord help him. Give him a French kiss. And then there's nothing man will do for you. You tell him you want this, you want that, he's going to do his best to give it. That's right. Amen. Let me move on here. I'm telling you to shut and I'm going to tell you something. It would help the kingdom of God a whole lot more. Amen. Yeah, you see, those of us who've been married for years, you know, we become accustomed to each other, but we need to keep the fire home fire burning. Yeah, Amen. Yeah, you see, because if you don't keep the home fire burning, then the, the temptations become greater to for the man and the woman. Amen. Amen. Show your temptation. Yeah, yeah. Here's the third thing, real quickly. If we're going to, if we're going to deal with these tragic, turbulent, and troubling times, mm -hmm. sanctify your communication. Amen. Sanctify means to clear from sin. We need to sanctify our communication. Amen. Yeah. And do you know what sanctifies? Love sanctifies. Proverbs 10 12. It says, Hatred stirs up strife. But love covers a multitude of sin. Love sanctifies. Sanctify your communication first with God. How do you do that? By loving Him with all of your mind, your heart, your strength, and your soul. Loving Him unconditionally. Sanctify communication first with God. Then, secondly, sanctify. Communication with yourself. Amen. You see, uh, Zig Ziglar said some of us uh, are engaged in stinking thinking. Oh, no. <laughs> you know, we're so down on ourselves. How can you lift somebody else up if you're down on yourself? You can't do it. Amen. That's the truth. 
So sanctify communication with yourself. Yeah. If you make mistakes in the past, forgive yourself. Look yeah. in the mirror and say, Self, I forgive you. Yeah. <laughs> sanctify communication with yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Then sanctify communication first with God. See, because Psalm 6, 6, 18 says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. You, your communication is cut off with God if you got sin in your heart. Right, right. Your communication with yourself is cut off with yourself if you're engaging in self-hatred, depression, sadness, and sorrow, disappointment, and beating down on yourself because things ain't going the way you want them to go in life. Right, right. You're like bad luck flavor. Wild, wild, woo-woo. Woe is me. Oh, yeah. Come on. Preach, preach, preach. Sanctify communication with God. Take my communication with yourself. But then, the most important relationship that exists between you and another person, your spouse. Sanctify communication between you and your spouse. Amen. Yes. Amen. Get it right. Amen. Yes. That don't mean you're not going to have disagreements. Amen. Even my wife and I have disagreements. Amen. But when we do, I get forgiven for being wrong and we just go right on. <laughs> <laughs> and what do you want to say to that, baby? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I do too. Okay. I do too. I do too. And then fourthly, sanctify your communication with others. Amen. How do you do that? Well, with your spouse, Jesus said in Ephesians 5, 25, husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. Yeah. How do you sanctify it with others? He said in John 15, 12, he says, Love you one another as I have loved you. Yeah. Love is the way we sanctify our communication. Yes, yes, indeed. We sanctify through love in these turbulent times that we live in. Amen. I'm going to say this one more time and I'll move on. Psalms of Solomon 8, 7, 8, 6, and 8, 7. Ladies, that tells you how to get everything you want from your husband. Fall in love with him. All over again. Yeah. All over again. Yes, and did you see the fire of romantic love can die out. Jesus. But but romantic love is like a fireplace. Yeah. Put another log of romantic love on the fire. Yeah. The, the unconditional love is a safety net that catches a relationship. But but romantic love you can you can yeah. start taking out taking out again, man. Yeah. Take on a date. Yeah, Some Sundays on after church, my wife said, "We going out to eat." I said, "No, I'm going to work." <laughs> yeah. But some Sundays, I said, "Come on, baby, where you want to go?" That's right. That's right. You want to go to Burger King? <laughs> <laughs> you know what she's telling me? She ain't like Reverend Bowick, and she don't use that. But I know what in her mind she's thinking. Hey, on to the now, now, now. Where you want to go, baby? Yeah, well. Barn Hill. Let's go, Barn Hill. I'm sitting up in Barn Hill eating. I ain't feeling real good about it because when I go to Barn Hill, I want to be able to eat. So when they see me coming, they say, lock the door. Here's the fourth and final thing. Seek spiritual activation. That's how we handle these turbulent times. Seek spiritual activation. Yeah. How? Ephesians, first of all, be filled with the Spirit. <laughs> Ephesians 5.18, and do not be drunk with wine where it is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Yeah. Number two, walk in the Spirit. Galatians 5.16, oh. this I say, then walk in the Spirit, and you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. Yeah. Number three, live in the Spirit. Ephesians yeah. 5.25 says, live in the Spirit. Yeah. And then, Ephesians, or Galatians 5.22, Produce the fruit of the Spirit. That's right. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, kindness, gentleness, meekness, and so on, the temperance. If a task is once begun, yeah. never leave it until it's done. Yeah. Be the labor, great or small, do it well, uh -huh. or not at all. Yeah. Seek spiritual activation. Yes, Lord. Yes, indeed. And if we do this, and if we apply these principles that we see here in 2 Timothy chapter 3, it will give us a remedy on how to deal with these tragic and turbulent and troubling times that we live in. Amen. 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 Amen
Amen. Amen. Now, let me ask you. Are you sure about your salvation this morning? Yes. Amen. You may have been at the church 30, 40 years. Yes. But are you sure if you die in this moment, your soul would be in heaven? Yes. yes. If you're sure, I want you to raise your hand. If you're absolutely sure you're going to heaven when you die, I want you to raise your hand. Yes. I want to take it a little farther than that. If you're absolutely sure, I want you to stand on your feet. Yeah. Amen. 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 Looks like everybody's sure. Amen. Amen. Secure your salvation. Shun your temptation. Yeah. Sanctify your communication. Yeah. While we're all standing. Amen. They're going to lead us in a song and we're going to give you an invitation. Amen. You sure of your salvation? Amen. You're sure of temptations? Amen. You're sanctifying your communication and you're engaging in spiritual activation? Amen. Maybe God is saying something to your heart and to your mind this morning Amen. that he's asking you to do. Amen. We're going to give you an invitation Amen. and lovingly invite you to come and express what God is saying to you.